dear students the house is not a home it is the lesson written by poli adler we have to consider the biography of poli adler poli adler was born in yanov a white russian village near the polish border on april 16 1899 the daughter of a jewish tailor was by nature temperamental in her autobiography a house is not a home adler recalled him as a man with a big ideas and a correspondingly large sense of his own importance in his eyes a wife's place was either in the kitchen or in child bed and sara my subdued self a facing little mother alternated uncomplainingly between them In 1913 the family planning to follow Adler was packed off to America accompanied by an older cousin but after reaching Bremen her cousin had second thoughts about embarking and the 14 year old Adler the youngest in steerage sailed on the Nafta Relon with her belongings in a potato sack Adler arrived at uh, Ellis Island knowing no english she was put on a train to mount holyok massachusetts where she was to stay with uh, acquaintances of acquaintances until her uh, family could arrive to claim her though her foster family was civil the warm and affectionate adler had to deal with their indifference world war 1 effectively scuttled the family's dreams of joining her and all this brief uh, stay over turned into four years house is not a home the explanation regarding this lesson first of all we have to go through the introduction the story highlights the thin difference between a house and a home what is the difference between a house and a home while a house is uh, always a building where people can live at the same time a home is a place where a family lives together sharing the uh, unique bond of love and oneness the narrator's house gets destroyed by fire and he gets a new house then he realizes that his home is the only built the one built by the love and affection of his family and loved ones love and affection of one's family is always precious as the narrator entered high school in the first year he felt strange in the junior school he had been the head of the class and he had enjoyed the privileges given to a senior student it was uncomfortable to be a fresher at the high school the school was twice as big as the old one and to make matters worse his friends had got into other schools so he was lonely to he would go back to his old school to meet the teachers because he missed his old school the teachers would encourage him to meet new people the new school and to get involved in new activities they said that after some time he would adjust to the new surroundings and would love the new school more than the previous one the teachers at the old school made him promise that he would visit them even when he got settled in the new school the narrator tried to feel comfortable with uh, these words of his teachers one sunday afternoon an accident occurred zan was sitting at the dining table to his homework the day was cold and windy and a fire was uh, up at the fireplace the narrator's pet cat was lying on top of the sheets of paper It was making a purring sound and was uh, hitting on his pen just for the amusement as then had saved the cat 
remained close to him as he protected her. Sand's mother tended the fire to keep the house warm. There was smoke filling the room from the ceiling. Within a few seconds, it filled the room and they could hardly see. They made their way to the front door and escaped into the garden. The roof had caught fire, which spread quickly. Zen ran to the neighbors to call the fire department, while his mother ran inside the house. Zen's mother came out of the house, holding a small box full of papers. She threw it on the lawn and ran back. She was trying to save important things, as Zan's father had died. When Zan was small, she had to save his pictures and letters, which were the only memories of his dad they had. Zan screamed at her not to go inside the burning house. Zan tried to run after her, but was stopped by a firefighter. The street was full of firefighter trucks. Zen tried to free himself and tried to explain that his mother had gone inside the house and he wanted to bring her back. The firefighter did not let him go because he knew that the very next moment Zen would run into the house. He said that the other firefighters would bring her back. The firefighter wrapped a blanket around Zan and made him sit in their car. A fireman came out of the house with Zan's mother behind him. He took her to the fire truck and put an oxygen mask on her mouth. Zan ran to her and hugged her. The thought of losing his mother aroused affection in Zan's heart and all thoughts of dislike vanished from his mind. The fireman calmed Zen and said that she, she would be fine. She had inhaled smoke. Then the fireman ran into the house to bring down the fire while the mother, son, Dio sat there wondering on what had happened. Zen still remembers how he saw his house burn and felt helpless about it. It took them five hours to control the fire. The house was totally burnt down. Then Zan realized that his pet cat was missing. He could not find it. He got sad and depressing thoughts like difficulty adjusting to the new school. The burning of the house and losing his pet cat made him cry. He thought that he was suffering many losses. They were not allowed to go into the building as it could be dangerous. Zen wanted to know about his cat, but he had to leave. They got into the car with none of their belongings. All they had were the few blankets given by the fireman. They spent the night at Zen's grandparents' house. Zen went to school the next day, just a Monday. At the time of the fire, he was uh, wearing the dress that uh, he wore to the church on Sundays. He was not wearing his shoes. He had removed them and kicked them off when he sat to do his homework. They were burnt in the fire too. So Zan borrowed tennis shoes from his aunt. He did not want to go to school, but his mother forced him to go. He was embarrassed because his clothes were uh, unusual. He did not have his bag, books and homework. He thought that God wanted that. He should live like a person who was different from others and did not fit well in the society. Zen was so upset that he wished to die. Zen walked around the school like a dull, lifeless person. He felt insecure as his belongings. His old school, old friends, pet cat, and his house had been snatched from him. On his way back, he walked through his burned house and was shocked to see the extent of damage that had been caused by the fire 
and water that had extinguished it. The only things that were safe were the ones that his mother had rescued, the papers, photos and some personal items. Zen had lost his cat too. Zen could not grieve the loss of his cat because they had to rebuild their house. They had to arrange a place to live in clothes, etc. They had to borrow money from his grandparents as they did not have their credit cards, cash, or any identity proofs to withdraw money from the bank. After some days, the workers were removing the remains of the burned house. They were uh, living in a rented apartment nearby, but Zan would visit his old house and see the workers. He wished to find his cat there. He had lost her, but kept thinking of the poor soul. How it would awake when Zan disturbed it and uh, then followed him, climbed up his gown and he would fall asleep while sitting in his pocket he missed her. Zen thought that bad news spread faster because everyone, including all the teachers, knew about his sad story. Zen felt embarrassed as if he was guilty for all that had happened, he was getting attention for all the wrong reasons. The next day at his school was unusual. Zen was changing for the gym class when uh, students gathered around him and asked him to hurry. Zen was accustomed to strange happenings and so did not react much. The students pushed him into the gym and he realized the reason when he reached. There was a table full of articles like notebooks, clothes, uh, stationery items. It felt like Christmas time. Zen got emotional. He made new friends. They invited him to their houses. He was moved by their concern for him. He felt relieved because it was for the first time that he felt something good was happening to him. He made new friends that day. After a month, uh, Zen visited his house as it was uh, being rebuilt. He had two friends with him. The incident transformed him. He came out of the negativity and made new friends. He realized that just like his house was being rebuilt, similarly his life was also being rebuilt. They sat on the pavement and were planning Zan's new bedroom. Someone walked up to Zan from behind and asked if the cat that uh, she was holding belonged to him. Zan grabbed his pet cat, held her close and cried. On union with her master, the cat made a happy sound. Zan's friends shared his happiness and jumped around. Due to the fire, Zan's pet cat uh, behaved strangely and uh, ran almost uh, a mile away. Although their phone number was written on, their, uh, on her collar, but as uh, their phone had been destroyed in the fire, the lady could not contact them. She made efforts to trace their address through the number and thus reached them. She could make out that the cat was being missed by the master because the cat was also sad and missed him. When Zan sat with his cat and his friends, the sadness disappeared. He was happy and thankful for getting a new life. She got him new friends, a kind woman who returned his cat and his pet cat. He got a new life. So this is the detailed summary of the story a house is not a home. Thank you for listening.